Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Niagara College's Spring Open House. My name is Elisa Blow, and I'm part of the recruitment department here at Niagara College, and I'll be the moderator for this session that you're joining uh, in this morning. This session, for those of you who are participating, uh, is for general arts and science. And we do have four different members of that faculty that are with us today, and I will be introducing them to you. I can see a lot of you starting to filter in now. So uh, while we're waiting just for some of you to get into this meeting and get started, we just have a little bit of general housekeeping to get started with. Uh, the first and most important is our land acknowledgement. Uh, for the college, which is Niagara College acknowledges the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and is within the land protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples, and acknowledging reminds us that our great standard of living is directly related to the resources and friendship of Indigenous people. So that's our, our land acknowledgement for you this morning. Also a little bit of housekeeping here. I just want to, sorry, I just would like to, uh, to go back. Um, to this screen, I uh, want to remind you that the deadline to accept uh, your offer is May 1st of 2021. Many programs are still open for fall, winter, and spring intakes. If you have any questions throughout the session, this is very important. If you have any questions throughout the session, please use the Q&A feature. So type your questions in there and we will have the faculty answer that uh, and answer all those questions for you in the time allowed. We have one hour to discuss. You can use the live chat feature at the bottom of our website. That's the Niagara College website. If you have any additional questions throughout the day, you can use the chat feature in uh, Zoom as well. But we really like those questions to be put in the Q&A. You can join us uh, for college exploration or take a virtual tour at a time that works for you. That's something that's available on our website as well. Explore our student services, ask me anything, drop in sessions. Uh, speak live with different uh, recruiters and staff throughout the day. That's all available for you in our spring open house. And we're recording all of these sessions as well. So if you want to watch it again, or if you have a friend that you want to watch this with, or a family member you want to watch this with later, those are all available for you after the session is completed. So uh, it's going to be a, a really good session here today. We wanna to talk about the fall term too, because there's a lot of questions about that. Uh, Niagara College closely monitors uh, the current and projected public health measures. So vaccination rates and other factors, a significant increase in on-campus learning is anticipated for the fall of 2021. Uh, the health and safety of our students, staff and faculty remains a very top priority with us. Courses and program elements that return to campus will comply with all public health measures and directives. Updates will be provided regularly as information becomes available and the delivery status for all programs will be posted in May. So uh, again, if you'd like up-to-date information on uh, our COVID regulations, uh, this is always current on our website. So that's niagaracollege.ca forward slash COVID-19 forward slash. So without further ado, we're going to get started with our School of Academic and Liberal Studies. As I mentioned earlier on, we have four different members of the faculty joining us today. We have Professor Jamie Orser, Orser who will be taking you through a lot of this presentation. As well, we have Dr. John McTavish, we have Professor Laura Hotham, and we have Anna McQuiston, who's an international advisor. This is very important for those of you international students who are joining us today. If you have any questions, uh, you're also very lucky to have an international advisor in this session because uh, this is a great opportunity for those of you who are not domestic students to talk to somebody who looks after uh, our international students. So Jamie, the floor is yours. Welcome everybody. I believe uh, Laura is going to start us off on this first slide and uh, I will be back momentarily. Thanks, Alyssa. No problem. 
Okay, welcome everyone. So we're going to start off actually by introducing ourselves, um, just so we get a better idea of, of uh, what we do. So my name is Laura Hotham. I'm the program coordinator at the Welland campus. Uh, so anybody interested in programs at that specific campus, um, you know, write down or take a screenshot of the of my email address and you can contact me. Yeah, and I'm John McTavish. I'm uh, Laura's counterpart at the Niagara on the Lake campus. And so there's my email as well. And I hope you watched that intro video as well, where I was explaining a little bit about the, uh, the programs that you can look at now or after we're finished. My name's Jamie Orser, and I'm also one of the coordinators over at the Welland campus. Um, I'm more of a curriculum coordinator, but Laura and I collaborate uh, on program uh, coordinating as well. Good day, everyone. My name is Anna McQuiston. I am an international student advisor. I am one of six advisors um, at Niagara College. I predominantly work out of the Welland campus, and I'm here to assist you with any um, issues you may have academically, um, assist you with immigration um, concerns, um, applications, and to help you transition into uh, the Canadian lifestyle. Welcome. Okay, so this presentation is going to cover the programs that we offer in the School of Academic and Liberal Studies. And this includes pre-community, pre-technology, which are located at the Welland campus, and then general arts and sciences college exploration and diploma paths, which are both which are located at both the Welland and the Niagara and Lake campuses. Okay. So Oops, sorry. It's okay. Go ahead. So in the video, we're going to talk about uh, first which program is right for you. And then Laura will talk a little bit about admission requirements. And finally, we'll end with some of the benefits of the pre-program pathways. Starting with uh, a look at pre-community and pre-technology. Pre-community is a pathway program for community programs. So if you know that you're interested in a particular community program like child and youth care or community and justice services, early childhood education, uh, educational assistance, special needs support program, fitness and health promotion, recreation therapy, social service worker, or any other community program, then the pre-community pathway would be right for you as the curriculum and the courses are designed to uh, get you some credit prior to entering some of those programs. If pre-technology is the area that, that you're interested in, our pre-technology pathway program are, is a pathway to our trades or technology programs. Programs like carpentry and renovation technician, civil engineering technician, computer engineering technician, computer programming, computer systems technician, electrical engineering technician, electronics engineering technician, or mechanical engineering technicians, or any other trade or technology program. So if, if you're interested in a specific program, these are your pathways. If you're not sure of your specific program interest, but you know you want to end up in community, pre-community is a good pathway to explore those various programs. If you know you want to end up in trades or technology, pre-technology is a great pathway to explore some of those programs. So I'm going to pass it over to John now to chat about uh, general arts and sciences. Okay, well, as I always say, the heart and lungs of Niagara College is our department because whatever program you decide to take, you will be taking some courses that we offer. Nobody gets a diploma in any program if they don't take some of our courses. But we also offer a one-year college exploration certificate and a two-year diploma for general arts and science. Now, general arts and science uh, is so important. If you talk to business leaders, they recommend this kind of an education. Why? Because we help, we help people think. We teach you critical thinking skills. We teach you teamwork skills. And most of all, we teach you written and oral communication skills, which are the number one traits that employers are looking for when they're going to hire somebody. The nice thing is, sometimes you're not sure what you really want to do with your life. And this program is perfect for that. So what you can do is start the college exploration program. And there's a couple of required courses that 
you have to take, but then you can pick and choose areas of interest. So maybe you'd like to try a business course, maybe you'd like to try a hospitality course, maybe you'd like to try something else and discover your passion. And that's the beautiful thing about this program. So you're not limited to just taking one kind of course. You can take courses from different areas around the college and those credits will be good for you to get your diploma. And you might discover, well, maybe this area isn't for me. And you find another area that is your passion. And then you can move ahead with that. Now, the one-year certificate is great. If you'd like to move on, you can do the two-year diploma. And again, what are your options after your two-year diploma? You can get that diploma and go out and get a job and, and become a success on, in the workplace using those skills that we have taught you and that you have learned, or you could transfer to university where you can use a lot of these credits and continue a bachelor's degree somewhere else. Or what many students do is they transfer into another program of over hundred programs that we offer here at the college. And then you could have two diplomas and have a better advantage when you're going to graduate. So again, the nice thing about this program is we give you an opportunity to choose courses from a variety of different areas until you discover your passion. Because sometimes students will go into a certain field and after a year they realize that's not for me. And they've really wasted a lot of time and money. Here you can discover your passion and then move forward and hopefully make the right choice to find you a successful and happy career where you can feel fulfilled and be a valuable contributing member to society. Okay, who's next? Okay, so the good news when it comes to admission requirements for this program, these programs is that all you need to have taken is uh, grade 12 C or U path English from high school. Uh, and if you do not have that, or you might be lacking that requirement, uh, we still encourage you to apply as admission is considered um, for, on an individual basis. And as was mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, applications are still open and you can go to that website today to, uh, to apply to our various programs. So some of the benefits of a pre-program pathway, whether it be pre-community, pre-technology, or even general arts and sciences, one year or two year programs, is that for students um, who are taking a pre-pathway program, when they reapply to their program of choice, um, admissions will consider two transcripts. So they'll look at your best marks from either your high school diploma or from your pre-program courses. The second benefit is you have access to a wealth of knowledge from your faculty and advisors to guide you through that pre-program. This is particularly important for students who aren't sure of their direction or where they're headed. Um, one of the courses that are in all three, all four of our programs is um, a student development course called Career and Academic Preparation. And here you get to explore with faculty who have expertise in the area in career discovery. Um, you get to explore what is of interest to you and what you might be interested in moving forward if you're unsure. The third one is experience, you get to experience a gentler transition. So if you're diving in um, to a post-secondary environment and it's sometimes that tra transition can be difficult and um, especially if you're entering into a competitive college program, there's rigorous expectations. And so if you start in a pre-program pathway, you get to um, mildly become aware of those college expectations and uh, you feel ready to enter those competitive programs after your pre-pathway program. The next one is uh, you gain increased preparedness. You get to learn a little bit more about your field of study prior to entering into the program area itself. And lastly, um, you possibly get the opportunity to use uh, what you your credits that you gain through your pre-pathway program, you get to use them as transfer credits. So particularly around math and communications or any of your elective courses, you won't have to retake those once you enter into um, a particular field of study. So I'll pass it off to John now. Um, 
that ends the formal to end the formal part of our, our presentation and uh, take any questions that you might have. Okay, so uh, let's see who has questions for us. Any questions about the programs in, in particular or the college in, in general? Remember, you've got until May to apply, but it's always better to apply sooner than later. And uh, you can also drop into one of our, our student services sessions to speak to a staff member. This recording will also be available. And so please uh, type your questions. There's a little button at the bottom of the screen that says Q&A. You can type a question there and we will start answering those for you. So we're gonna move into this frame now so everybody can see all your faces uh, while you're talking. And again, as uh, Dr. McTavish said, please uh, put any questions into the Q&A. But while we're waiting for that, um, just in the chat, if I could ask the faculty, um, you know, we kind of would like to put your emails in there if that's possible. Uh, so if you don't mind just entering into the chat your emails uh, along with your name, just so that um, some of the students, uh, if they'd let, have questions after uh, that they think of, uh, that they can reach out to you um, with those questions. We actually have a student on right now um, that she was a student in our program last year and now she is currently in the CYC program and I'm wondering if she could speak uh, to the group to explain um, the, the three reasons why she uh, chose a pre-program. Okay, um, and can you tell me what her name is, Laura, so we can find, uh, find her and open up her microphone? Uh, Jenny Kneebone. Okay. Jenny, uh, we've uh, allowed you the opportunity so you can open up your microphone and chat. I'm hoping this is the correct Jenny. It just said Jenny in the uh, in the attendees list. Yes, it's the correct one. Thank Great. you. Hi. <laughs> so um, the first reason why I kind of chose Niagara College obviously was geography for me. Um, it was just a location that was closer. I wasn't really looking into what a college offered at that point. I was just more interested in geography, but why I choose to actually stay with Niagara College and why I chose to continue on was mainly for what the college offers. It's um, more than just your, your program choice. It's, it's the friends you make, it's the professors you get to uh, participate with, it's the services, it's the care. Um, each student, it, it's treated, they're treated as individuals with different needs, wants, pursuits. In Niagara College, they just, open that up and respect every individuality that each student brings and embraces it to be better in a whole enlightened experience as a whole. So it's a very mm -hmm. forward thinking community of people that keep moving forward and moving up with uh, everything that is changing and with the new services of online learning. It's, you know, it's a nerve wracking experience because a lot of students don't know how to take that. But thankfully, the faculty have always been very considerate into those needs, offering services, help, guidance, um, making special office times if you ever need to talk or if you're not sure how to do something. Um, you know, the peers have also been great offering peer groups that we can break off into. And they even choose to challenge you at times as well and maybe even sway your thinking into, you know, your proceeding with um, your course. So for me, it's just being a student at college, it, it's a lifetime of experiences and preparedness that I take with me beyond the education that pre-community had provided me. I wasn't sure which community um, services program I wanted to go into. I actually originally came in with one thought, left with another thought. And a lot of that had to do with the teachings of the professors and taking care to explain, to, to teach, to talk, and to answer all questions that you may have. So it's, you know, I appreciate the hands-on efforts, the practical training, and it's a lot that employers do want to see because usually when you are going out into that workforce, they want experience here, experience there, you know, two years, five years. And I just find that Niagara College has an amazing reputation that they offer this hands-on experience and employers are, are so willing and ready to hire you on and bring you on because of that. So for me, Niagara College has been, it's been a great community source of, of help and it has helped me stay focused and progressed. And I thank the professors and all the peers that I've been very blessed to have been able to work with. 
Oh, well, that was that was great, Jenny. I mean, one, one thing we always talk about is promoting a culture of caring. I mean, yeah. That's what we really we we care about your success because your success is is the success of all of us together. And, and I see that uh, our one of our associate deans, Jim Butko, has joined us. So would you like to introduce yourself, Jim? Sure. I just needed to give Jim permission to talk. So hopefully, Jim, you can open up your microphone now. Welcome to everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you've been having an excellent introduction to our programs. Um, I, again, I, I think I can speak knowingly of this because I have uh, one of my sons uh, graduated from the gas diploma and he's just finishing up acting now. So he used it as a pathway into acting. And another son um, was in the program for a term before transitioning to uh, broadcasting and uh, I'm sure everything that people have been telling you about uh, an introduction to the college, uh, a way to explore, a way to get transfer credits to make your future academic career a little easier. Um, you know, those are all lived experiences for my kids. And um, it's really been a great experience to um, be the associate dean of this program, but also see it benefiting my children. So. Hopefully some of you will take advantage of this program to um, find out what you want to do and have a successful career. Great, well, we, we have a question actually here. It's, uh, this is from somebody uh, who says, I'm currently completing a part-time certificate in criminal psychology and behavior and thinking of taking pre-community in the fall. Is this a good combo for getting into the social service worker program? Who can answer that? Sorry, the, the first program was what? Uh, Part-time certificate in criminal psychology and behavior and thinking of taking pre-community and if that's a good combination for the social service worker program. Well, the pre-community pre program is an excellent um, preparatory program for all of the community programs. Um, the introduction into psychology, sociology, the communications course you'll take, uh, the introduction into math even, um, they're all excellent. Um, some of those would be transfer credits to reduce your course load in social service worker. Um, and um, the teachers that you will have in the pre-community program are some of the same teachers that teach into the social service worker program. So, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're going to get the same curriculum um, and opportunity. And that is one of the competitive uh, community programs. So, um, the grade you receive in the pre-community program could help you uh, if, if it's extremely competitive in any given year. So I would say, yes, it's, a, it's an excellent uh, preparation for the social service worker program. Great, good question, good answer. Who's next? Who else would like to ask us a question? I believe we have a question. Can I interact with other students who are in the same program before arrival? Um, if you're international, yes. Um, we do have um, Facebook, uh, we're, on, we're live on Facebook and you can connect with students there. Um, you can also um, look at the events calendar. Um, we do have activities happening almost daily. Um, so that's a good place to look and connect with, with students. And in addition, the International Student Advisors, um, they hold a weekly session that you can connect. So you can ask your International Student Advisor any questions um, during that, that hour, and you can meet with other students there as well. We have a couple of students who have joined a little late too. So they've just come in now. Um, and even though you've just joined now and we've been through the PowerPoint, that's fine. Um, if you have any questions, uh, there are uh, faculty members here from the general arts and science program that are available to help you. Uh, we have uh, 
Professor Laura Hotham. We have Anna McQuiston here. She's from the International Department. She's an international advisor. So if you have any questions and you're not a domestic student, she's here for you. Uh, we also have uh, Professor Jamie Orser, uh, who is here as well. And um, we have a student uh, who is currently in the program, Jenny, uh, who is here to help us out if any of you students have any questions. And you know, like I said, don't feel free to uh, put those questions in the Q and A, uh, so that so that we can have the panelists uh, panelists answer them for you. Maybe while we're waiting, just to see if any of these new people do have any questions, um, maybe some of one of you would like to speak to. Um, you know how things are going uh, in the COVID environment. What the the learning environment is. I know a lot of people have questions about that in in sessions that uh, that we've been a part of. Sure, I could start. Um, I can speak specifically about the Sociology 1430 course that is delivered into all of these programs um, under our division. And we had been teaching the course in, in various deliveries prior to COVID. So we had wealth of resources to flip that transition online. So it was a very smooth um, switch for us and um with the rest of the courses in in various pro in these various programs the same has taken place many of our faculty in liberal arts and sciences as because we were teaching elective courses across the college many of us were already teaching online to begin with so there's a lot of expertise in um, digital delivery and and virtual delivery and um, we've been exploring and using all of the tools that we have at our uh, disposal with uh, Microsoft or Microsoft Teams and Blackboard Collaborate. Um, so you'll find that uh, you're able to virtually connect with your your students, um, your teachers in a virtual face to face environment still. Also, if I can just say something as a student who is doing the virtual classes online, um, even though all the programs are offered, I find that the professors understand the individual needs of each of the students and that not everybody is accessible to use each one like the, you know, they don't know how to use Blackboard or there's a problem with MS Teams, whatever the case may be, they've, they've really found a way to work with each student to make sure that they're very effective in being able to receive, retrieve and submit their material. And they're very on top of reaching out as well to the students that if you're having a problem, please let me know. We'll work with different avenue. We'll try and get this submitted. Hey, I know it's, it's, it's a different time of learning, but this is coming up, that's coming up. Um, if you can't do it this way, let's do it that way. Um, you know, because it's, it's a time of technology where everybody can't always have the proper technology right away at the hands if you don't know, I guess, what was coming up or expected of you prior to this. Because everybody came in expecting we were supposed to return. Um, they also came and started off first off as a in-class student, not a virtually online student. And, you know, a lot of students, they do have to work to put themselves through the schooling. So the professors have been absolutely amazing in trying to work with you with the technology aspects of everything, reaching out personally, directly, making extra office time just to discuss with you, even touching base to say, hey, how are you doing on this? Is there something I can advise you on, something I can help you with or redirect you on? So it's, it's been a very, very easy transition because of the professors and they're just, I, I mean, I'm so grateful for them because they've just been so extensive in their time and their approach to each of the students, even just breaking you out into collaborative groups, checking in on the group saying, hey, you know what, um, if you guys can maybe work together outside, inside, because it's a great support system that we need from all around, not just the professors, but the peers as well. And they've been great um, in helping as well in the sense that, some peers are like, if you can't submit it, send it to me, I can submit it for you. So there's a huge backup of support that you are having all around that it's just, it's very overwhelming in the sense that I'm, it, it's gratifying. It's, it's so grateful that leaving here, you have all these extra friends because you've had to have such a strong community and support within the peer groups as well as with the professors. So it's, it's very nice to see. And it's, it's just, it's amazing. I can't say enough on how thankful I am for the peers that I've been able to be in contact with and the professors that have really kept us in contact. Good stuff. 
That's wonderful, Jenny. Um, yeah, the services, there's a lot of services, like it's all new for us as well, going virtual. And um, the library has done an amazing job of, of promoting um, um, a peer tutor system virtually, as well as, um, oh, sorry, <laughs> didn't know it was on mute. No, you weren't, you're oh, fine. You weren't. I felt fine. the mute button. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so the library has promoted also um, a peer tutor just to help students with Blackboard because Blackboard is, is um, a hard thing to learn um, if you're not used to it, right? Um, as well as they've um, promoted the launch program and that has valuable information um, for any student to, to get uh, started with, with their program and, and easy um, navigation um, towards like the, the systems that you will be using. Um, in addition, um, it's housed under the international uh, website, but it's open to everybody. It's open to domestic and international. And it's our BNC Ready modules. And we have a lot of modules that help you get settled um, in Canada and, and just in this learning environment. We do have one uh, specially designed for online learning and everything that you need to know with, with technology. So I would encourage any student to, um, to look at those modules. They're, they're easy to do. They take between five and 15 minutes and it, there's a wealth of information that's provided. But all you have to do is ask, reach out, ask. That's the best advice I can give you. And it was so nice to hear from you, Jenny, from a student's perspective, because yeah, it, it does seem daunting with the technology, but also know um, any students out there know that uh, we as uh, faculty get that as well. Like I remember when we had to transition and I had to transition to live uh, virtual lectures, my biggest fear was the technology. Is it going to work? Is it, you know, uh, all of these things. So we understand from our personal perspective um, what you're all going through as well. So we definitely, like Jenny mentioned, it's just so nice to hear because if you can't submit an assignment, the particular way that I ask, if you can email it, that's great. Like we're we're all trying to just help each other navigate through this time. Yeah. But um, I've used the, uh, the peer tutoring services as well as the IT with many laughs along the way because it's, it's, still, uh, it's still tough for me um, to navigate as a more mature student when I'm used to being in classroom. But my saying's always been, I may have come in as a mature student, but I'm leaving as a wiser graduate with Niagara College. But um, using those services, the peer tutoring and IT, they're also very approachable and very helpful the, you know, they try to accommodate you as well and try and help you navigate through whatever it is you need to do to be successful as well. So I love the peer tutoring um, and, you know, not even just for tutoring services, but in the sense that if you are not sure if you're on the correct path, even they help you with that. They help you see that, you know, you are doing this correctly, but maybe you're just overthinking things, which is what I tend to do. <laughs> so they know me, but they're very helpful. They're very, very helpful. There we go. Okay, we've got another question that's just come in here too. Uh, the question is, if the session will be held online, can I still book a flight? Oh, this is going to be an international question, Anna. Uh, can I still book a flight? I mean, can I attend online classes after arrival in Canada or the classes will be held online after arrival? Thank you for asking that question. Um, if the start of the term, your classes are online, they're gonna remain online throughout the duration of, of that term. Um, whether you come to Canada, that's the difficult question to answer because um, you have to have a good reason, okay? Because the government of Canada um, is still telling people that if it's not essential for you to be in Canada, then don't attempt to come. You still can get um, your postgraduate work permit if you're studying online from back home. Um, if you do think you have to come, if, there, if there's a good reason and you're gonna to have to present that, um, you're also gonna to have to have a, a very good quarantine plan because um, everybody who does enter into Canada has to quarantine, self-quarantine for 14 days. I would highly suggest that you contact the NC quarantine team for any information about that. All right, ladies, we're gonna close it off. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, enjoy the rest of your day.